Hello everybody and welcome to another video. In this video, we're gonna be setting up our Flask app. So if you watched the previous video last week, we created a Flask app that uh, monitors services on our machine. And now we wanna we want deploy this like in a live environment, in a production environment, right? So this isn't really like a production environment. This, this is just still a development environment, but you know, you would just basically do the same thing on the production environment. This is just, you know, a development uh, server uh, for testing purposes. Uh, but anyway, uh, first of all, a uh, few things that you need to have is already you need to have uh, Conda installed because we're going to be running this in a Conda environment. We don't want to be installing all those packages system wide. We want to have a separate Conda environment where all of the packages will reside in. I've already installed it over here. You can see that I'm in the base environment. We're going to be creating a new environment. If you don't have Conda installed, then go back to a different video. I'll link it over here and then you can set up Conda and then you can follow along with the video to deploy your Flask application. So first of all, of course, right now we don't have uh, any projects. We don't have any uh, virtual environments yet. So let's go ahead and create a virtual em environment first. So uh, I'm going to copy because, again, I prepared all of this in advance. So I'm just going to be copying the commands for here. So we're going to be doing conda create minus n. And then if you remember the uh, name of the uh, service or the application that we uh, created last time was the watcher. So we're going to be creating that uh, virtual environment again. So we're just going to be doing conda create minus n the watcher. We're going to be using Python 3.10 and flask is going to be 2.2.2. .2 .2 .2 will proceed here and then when all is done here we can go ahead and activate that virtual environment by copying this over here so we're going to be activating the watcher and let's uh we're going to be doing which python and that's going to be over here and we can do something like python dash dash version and we can see that it's 3.10.9 and the same goes for uh if we do conda lists and we grep on flask, we should see flask 2.2.2 is installed. Okay, so our virtual environment is almost ready. We just need one more thing, and that's going to be uh, UWSGI, which is going to be the production server that we're going to be uh, running our application on. So we're going to be doing conda install minus C conda forge. That's very important because if you don't specify the channel, it won't find UWSGI. So make sure that you include that minus C conda forge in here, and then it will be able to find the UWSGI uh, package. So let's go ahead and install that. So we'll do yes here and it will install all of these uh, packages. There we go. It's done. And now let's see, we are in uh, home slash Ubuntu. So we're going to be cloning our uh, service monitor app here. Uh, and I'll link this in the video description if you want to try this yourself with a uh, application that's already prepared. Uh, so this is like the service monitor that, that we created. Uh, we're just going to be cloning that from Git. So we're going to be doing Git clone and then uh, we'll specify the URL where the uh, service monitor is at. There we go. And then if we do an LS, we'll see that this is over here. Uh, and now we have to make a directory where this is going to be uh, hosted in or like this is going to be residing in because we don't want to run this from our own uh, home directory. We want to have this at the at, at like a central location. It's mkdir, of course. There we go. So we have this directory now. And now what we have to do is we have to copy and we'll do minus R. And we'll do uh, the watcher source and then anything in there needs to go into slash opt slash the watcher uh, and of course we'll have to sudo that because otherwise we won't have any right access to that opt uh, the watcher directory so let's do that and let's go into slash opt slash the watcher and let's list everything in here and we have this app.py config.py service info so these are all the uh this is like the main application and these this is like the service module and then this is our config file where all of the config would be in and so now we should be able to run this command over here 
So we're going to be doing UWSGI dash dash HTTP 0000, 000 port 8000. And then the WSGI file is going to be app.py, which is the file that we created. We're going to be uh, defining also callable is app. Okay, so it's running now and let's go back into our browser. Let's refresh this and we can see that the application is indeed running. But this isn't really the best way to go about it. The best way to go about it uh, for me personally is to create an ini file. And this ini file is going to contain a lot of things that we want to define here. So first of all, I'm going to copy this over here and then we're going to insert here. And then this uh, UWSGI uh, is going to be the title or whatever of this file. And then uh, HTTP is going to be at IP 00008000. Module is going to be app because we don't need to specify really app.py. We just need to specify app and that way it can find the application. The callable is also going to be app. We're going to assign four processes and we're going to also assign two threads. So let's write and quit that as well. And now we should be able to run uh, this command over here. So we're going to be doing uwsgi dash dash ini, and then we're going to be defining this uh, app.ini. And actually, uwsgi is just going to read that ini file. And with that ini file, you can just have a separate file with all the configuration. You don't need to specify it in the command line. I showed you how to do it without the ini file, but again, uh, this is just to demo how to do it, but I would always recommend using this ini file because it's just easier to change the ini file and then just run the same command over and over again. So you don't need to change like the command all, all the time. So we should be able to do this and we can see that these uh, four workers have started. And if we uh, refresh here, we should still see our watcher service uh, or watcher application, sorry. Uh, so that works all great, but this isn't really very helpful because we always need to go in the terminal to run this. So we want to be able to just shove this into the background and run this as a service, right? That would be the ideal scenario. So let's do that. So first of all, let's create a service file. We'll place this under the forward slash lib systemd system the watcher dot service. On some distributions, you might want to put this in the forward slash Etsy systemd. Uh, for this distro for Ubuntu, it's under the forward slash lib systemd system the watcher dot service. So that's a new file. Let's open it and now let's copy our service file in here. So I already prepared this and basically what we're doing here is we'll describe the unit and we'll describe the description here, which is the watcher service monitor. And then service is going to be Ubuntu. Group is also going to be Ubuntu. The working directory is going to be the directory where the app resides in and then we're going to be saying okay bin bash so run bin bash minus c and then we're going to be doing source opt miniconda and this is the activate binary from miniconda and so it's going to be activating the watcher so this is actually the part where we activate the virtual environment and then we're going to be running the uwsgi uh, dash dash any opt the watcher and what we could also do over here is uh, type equals notify and then we can do something like notify equals all and that will just be a better way to, to do it because it's going to notify when the service is actually started okay we'll write and quit this and then we'll be doing sudo systemctl uh, enable the watcher there we go and now we should be able to just do sudo systemctl start the watcher there we go and if we go into our application here we should see that it's still running and now let's do something like uh, sudo systemctl stop app armor armor Okay, let's refresh the page and it says that it's not running. Perfect. So let's start it again and let's refresh again and now it's running. Okay, so the application still works and we have deployed our application with a service and now we're actually running this in a production environment. Now, in a real production environment, you most likely won't be exposing the UWS GI uh, to the outside world. Instead, you'll be using something like a uh, reverse proxy. 
right? So a reverse proxy basically is just a web, so web server that lives on the outside that listens, and that will just forward traffic to specific websites. So, uh, or specific ports, uh, rather, like, for example, this uh, service here. But this is not really what we are planning on doing in this video. I think I'm going to create a different video because it's uh, different. You know, you can do it with Nginx, you can do it with Apache. Uh, those are like the two most common uh, reverse proxies. But I think I'm going to leave it at this with the video here. And I hope you learned something from this. This is really something that you need to know when you're developing Flask applications. Uh, people will often just run the uh, development server for Flask, but that's really not meant to be used in a production environment. You're going to be using something like UWS GI uh, to run your uh, Flask application in a real life or in, an, in a real production scenario. Uh, even on development servers, people would just create these U UWS GIs uh, because it just gives you the opportunity to test these things first in a development environment, moving on to a staging environment, and then finally to a live or production environment so i hope you enjoyed this video guys and if you did please leave a like and a comment below and if you want to see more of my videos please subscribe and i'll see you in the next video bye bye